going on guys? Today we are out here at Lake Superior and uh, I'm flying solo today. Everybody had to go home and uh, we have a perfect day out here. It's cold this morning. Fall is definitely in the air. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a perfect day. Winds are light and variable all day. We had a big blow yesterday so we weren't out here but it uh, looks like a great looking day. And uh, we might do some jigging, we might do some trolling. We'll see how fish are set up and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, this time of year these fish tend to really start getting heavy um, as you can tell from the last couple videos we've done out here so I'm excited time to get after it hooked up fish on that is what it's about first thing in the morning And we got him on. It's not a super big one, but he's not too bad. We'll take him like that all day long on the jig rod. Look at that. Let's scoop him up here. Oh yeah. <laughs> it never gets old jigging these things. An absolute blast. Seems like if you can get on them while they're real active. A lot of times right away in the morning is your best kind of shot to do this. That one bit it on the way down as many of them do. Pull out here. Not a giant trout, but definitely a very respectable fish. We'll take him like that all day long. He's ready to go. We're going to get him back. There he goes. Fish on. Actually, Temporarily abandoned the jigging. Just wasn't seeing them stacked up quite enough. And we have our first trolling fish out of the day. Just got set up, coming down the reef. And we're getting lots of questions on, here he goes, what kind of spread we're using. So we'll go into a bunch of that today what fish look like on the graph, all that good stuff. I'm gonna try not to slow down too much for this one. But that one hit a Meg Dipsy right as we were getting set up. Just thrashing around back there. Not too bad of a fish. Good one to start. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to slow him down here. This is where things might get dicey. Look at that thing. Awesome fish. I think I'm basically just gonna have to hand line him off the dipsy. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll take that for the first one all day long all right guys there we go there's trolling trout number one of the day i'm gonna get them back quick because i gotta keep running this spread all by myself but just a quality quality lake superior lake chat right there too much fun not to do all right so ever since we started doing a bunch of lake trout videos everybody's been asking what we're using for baits um, and stuff like that. So uh, basically, you know, 90% of the time we're trolling out here. Um, it's just caught us pretty much all, most of the fish we've caught. Um, but when we are, you know, when we're trolling, basically we're just using spoons and we're not using real heavy spoons. We're using a lot of flutter spoons. Flutter spoons will sink very slow um, and they basically have a lot more action at a slow speed. So um, I don't think they're anything fancy. Most of these are either moonshine spoons or warrior spoons in like, uh, I don't even know, a four and a half inch version. Um, we've been running a lot of like real bright ones, like that one's been all bit up the last few days. Uh, this one's been a great color here. Um, basically the bright stuff is mainly what we're using. Um, this one's been a great one the last couple days out here. Um, but a lot, it's super simple setup. You know, I think these fish don't see a whole lot of baits for the most part. I mean, there's just too much water for how many um, people are out here fishing and, and there's a ton of trout in here. So um, I don't think it's super simple. I get a whole bunch of super bright flutter spoons um, and you're gonna be successful. As far as single hooks or double hooks, I don't see much of a difference. The one thing I'll do if I have 
um, if I'm running single hooks or if they come with one and I'm just gonna start running them like that, um, I'll take the hook and normally the way single hook spoons will come is that the hook will be directly in point just like that with uh, this back part of the hook here, um, which makes it super strong. When you do hook a fish, it's super, you pretty much got them solid, but if a fish bites and somehow has the bait like that, it can pull out of the side of their mouth like that. So one thing I'll do, I'll just take and offset that. And that's kind of a good tip when, if you're fishing for anything big with a single hook. You know, I take, and I'll kind of show you the before and after here, so you can see how perfectly in the line that is right there. What you want to do is you want to take that hook and just kind of bend it. I got the hook in the pliers and I'm bending the hook like that. So basically now what you have, it might not look like a lot, but this is an offset hook now. And basically now when a fish grabs, if it does grab it sideways, it's gonna penetrate into them so it can't ever get out the side of their mouth or something like that. A super simple tip, but uh, whenever you're fishing big single hooks, it definitely pays to do that. another one doubled up we got two fish on this one looks bigger I'm gonna put this in the rod holder that looks like a better fish This is when it gets fun. Got 170 out on this one. We're just gonna take our time. Definitely a nicer fish. The kind we come out here for. Nothing huge, but we will take them. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Got him. There we go. I'll show you guys the double. There's number one. Chunky Lake Superior Lake Trout. He was a fighter. He put up a good fight. So we're going to let that one go. Here's the second one. We're gonna let him go right at the side here. We're not even gonna pull him in. He goes. Back to the bottom. All right guys, so now that we've talked about kind of what we're running for baits, spoons, stuff like that, we're gonna talk a little bit about the terminal tackle side and how we're getting baits down to the depth. So uh, we're using Magnum Dipsies, the number threes, and one pound snap weights. And when we're using these big snap weights, um, I'm not sure if a lot of guys use these or not, but basically the setup that we have on everything, whether it's a Dipsy or not, is we're running like 10, 12 feet, 20 pound, or 25, I can't remember, but it doesn't really matter, fluorocarbon, off the end of the dipsy, or in this case, right to a swivel, um, which is our leader. And then our main line is a 50 pound braided line. And we're running this when we're letting out our basically our snap weight setup. What we're doing is we're letting out like 30 or 40 feet just to get the weight a little bit ways from the fish. And I'll show you the snap weight here in a second. Basically all they are is these bigger red offshore tackle clips. Uh, and then just down to a one pound ball, the split ring. And uh, these have a pin right in the middle. So your line, it's much harder for the line to get out of here. We've never lost one of these snap weights. But if you're gonna run braid, you're gonna wanna double wrap that clip in the line, which has not been an issue either. We thought it would be an issue with just, you know, breaking on a big fish or if it got stuck in a rock, but it still slides down. So we double wrap the line through the clip. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this back to the desired depth. So, 
These are gonna have a little bit different dive curve depending on how much current you're in and how fast you're going, obviously. But it's super easy to get down to bottom in 100 plus feet of water. Uh, basically, you know, if you're going, if there's not much current, 250 at two and a half is gonna be about 100 feet down, it seems like. Now, we play with these ones quite a bit, unlike the Dipsies. The Dipsies have a real solid dive curve in current, out of current. Um, so we're gonna let this one out because I want this bait about 90 down. So I'm gonna let it out about 250 and I'm doing it nice and slow and controlled so that that weight's not falling so fast or wraps the spoon in the top of the line, which doesn't happen a whole lot, but sometimes will happen. So once I got that out 220, I'm just gonna make sure my drag is good and I'm running these kind of vertically right out the back of the boat. Like that. Pretty simple setup there. Um, and yeah, the nice part is obviously when you're fighting the fish, unlike the Dipsy, you get the weight within 40 feet of the boat and you unclip the weight and you just fight the fish. So super simple there. So that's normally if we have a couple guys in the boat, we're running two rods, just like that one pound snap weight off the back corner of the boat. And then we're running Dipsies obviously. And if you're not familiar with what Dipsy divers are, they're basically just a big weighted plate uh, that has a dive curve and you can set it between one and three. Three's gonna make it go farther one way, and you can adjust this right to left. On a zero setting, this is just gonna go straight down, no directional swing. So it's kinda like an underwater planer board. Um, you probably wanna run snubbers on stuff. And the same thing with this, we're running 50 pound braid on them, and then we're running, like I said, 10, 12 foot, uh, 20 pound lead on these. Swivels on both ends. So this is my left rod, so I have this one set at a left two right now. Now if I had you know, a couple guys in the boat, or like we were doing the last few days up here, we'd run one on a three, one on a one and a half, and then we run those one palm balls. And that kind of staggers our baits. One's out here, one's out here, one's right down the middle. Obviously, if your, bait, if your dipsy diver's on a zero setting, it's gonna have a quicker dive curve of the same depth than if it would have a three. Um, so typically your shortest lines out the boat would be your inside dipsy divers. So I'll get this one set here. And basically the way these work, these have a ton of pressure on them once you start, uh, once you clip them shut and start moving. So they have a clip here, basically the fish bites and it's gonna pull super hard to the water like this. The fish bites, it pops that clip and then all you're reeling in. This has basically no drag after that. So we're gonna set that, it's at one and a half right now. And I'm gonna get this down. They'll have dive curves for every dipsy diver you buy. I'll have a, probably a dive curve right in the bag. And same thing, I'm gonna let this one back about 180 which is gonna get me down about 90 feet. And typically when I'm letting these out, I like to basically do it just like this. And then just loosen that drag up so it starts going out nice. And then at 180, I'm gonna shut that off. So, you know, that's basically the spread we're running. Um, sometimes, you know, we might have a whole bunch more lines, but it's a combination of dipsies and these one pound balls that lets us catch all these fish that are in really deep water uh, without using downriggers. So, you know, don't feel like if you wanna come out here and do this that you have to have downriggers on your boat. There's plenty of ways to achieve the depth uh, without downriggers, so, um, and we'll run a whole bunch of lines doing it. Staying down. Feels decent. This was on the one pound snap weight. Real colored up one. Come here, buddy. All right, there we go. I'll give you guys a look. Real colored up Lake Superior Lake Trout. Fall is here and uh, great day out here. We're gonna pop that guy back. 
So we haven't filmed a whole lot of information with a lot of our lake trout videos, and a lot of that's just because, you know, it's relatively new to me too, and I'm still figuring out everything before I start talking about all sorts of stuff that maybe isn't true. But, you know, we've had a pretty good success out here the last several times we've been out here, caught a whole bunch of lake trout and some good ones. Um, so the biggest thing is just obviously getting around fish, right? Um, and it seems like, you know, most of the time we're fishing a lot of these bigger channel areas out on the Apostle Islands here. We're not getting on real big flats or stuff like that. And typically we're following a depth contour, right? And that changes a little bit every day. Sometimes it might be 120 feet, some days it might be 70 feet, stuff like that. But the bottom line is you're always looking for fish, right? And lake trout are gonna be super easy to mark because they're gonna be pretty big and they're typically gonna be off the bottom at least a little bit. Um, at least a lot of them that you're gonna mark are gonna be off the bottom a little bit. And they're gonna be a big mark or several marks that look something like this right here. And uh, you know, if I see kind of a real good looking area um, where I'm just seeing a lot of fish, I'll throw down a waypoint. And a lot of times what you'll have in these areas is some kind of like lip in the bottom. And a lot of times it'll be right at the tip of a point or like right on a, uh, a steep inside corner or something like that. And a lot of times I think, you know, there's a lot of current out here and it kind of seems to shift around day to day. And those fish kind of set up on that sweet spot, just like any other fish would, whether it's a walleye or a muskie or anything like that. And a lot of these kind of either corners of reefs or corners of points where there's a lot of character. Uh, so like here you can see a shot, there's a rise um, and fish sitting on it. And it, once you kind of get used to looking at a lot of this stuff and spend some time out here and catch some fish along the way, it makes it real easy to come over a spot and be like waypoint, and, you know, another quarter mile down the stretch, waypoint. And then all of a sudden, like you, just like we do with walleye fishing, you can connect a lot of the dots um, between areas that have a lot of fish. Um, so that's basically what we're doing. You know, if you're coming out here for your first time, you know, you're probably going to be looking in that 70 to 100, 130 foot range to start um, and just start fishing. I mean, these fish can see a long ways up, so you don't typically have to set right on the bottom. You know, even if it's 130 feet and you're trolling a flat that's 100, um, you know, and you're swinging out to deeper water, don't be afraid to just leave those baits up high because these fish can see forever. And you see it a lot of times when you're jigging, you know, we'll drop down on fish and the bait will get 30 feet from the bottom and they'll just start coming up to chase it. So they can obviously see that bait. Um, because obviously the water is so clear out here. So you know, if you're coming out here for the first time, keep an eye on the graph, keep an eye out for sweet spots, and uh, waypoint a lot of that good looking stuff. The trout are super easy to see on the graph, so that should kind of steer you in the right direction. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for today. Um, I gotta get back home and maybe even film some walleyes this week. We'll see what, or some muskies. A muskie bite sounds good too. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope if you had a question about what, how we're catching these trout, it was answered today. Uh, not a ton of big fish today, but caught a whole bunch of lake trout out here in Lake Superior. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorite destinations to come fish. Always a good time. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.